this week I got the frame and some other bits back from the powder coaters. A couple of bits on the engine and the rear drive unit sandblasted. Got the swing arm painted. Stripped the forks, new fork tubes. Painted the lowers. Painted the lower triple tree. And I got a new piece of kit for the workshop. Just waiting for the frame to come back from the powder coaters. I'm just cleaning up the engine a bit and I've got these parts here that I'm going to get sandblasted. Just the sump, the rear drive unit which I've carefully masked off, blanked off here. Some rubber and um, a plastic flange. I don't want to get any grit anywhere near the insides of that. It's all uh, covered in plastic under there. This is the top cover for the engine. Uh, I just want to get that blasted to try and get a better finish on this to sort of more match the engine. By the way this is where I'm thinking of putting the ignition switch. Swing arms come up nice. That's three coats of epoxy enamel. I'll just let that harden for a couple more days before I do anything. And just about to start on uh, replacing these fork tubes. Hmm, it's a bit of a worry. Definitely is a smaller diameter on the new one. So these spaces here are exactly 30 millimeters in diameter. So on the existing fork tube, ever so slightly over, probably 0 0.04 over and on these new ones I think it's about 0 0.04 under size. What a pain. Right so I think the best option is going to be to turn these down marginally. I don't want to put these in the lathe that will only um, damage the surface. I do have a, a diagram there, but just to make sure I get this back together as I found it.
Okay, I just mounted these in, in the drill and I've um, <coughs> knocked them back with some wet and dry. <coughs> I only needed to take off 0.1 of a millimetre. These um, now fit in there. Another example of dodgy stuff you do when you don't have your own lathe. Putting these dampers back together. Now I found that these guys here were on with a Loctite, <coughs> so I blasted this with heat, and it softened it up, and then these could, these came off reasonably easy. After that, you got to be careful with this little seal here. It's fairly fragile. It just sits in there like that. Um, I'll put that on after I screw this on. So the way the order in which this goes together is put your circlip on, the spacer with the recessed end away from the circlip. That recess is where the, this nylon washer sits. And you've got the washer with the holes in it, spring, and then this end here, threaded. I'm just putting some Loctite in here. Screw this on all the way. Now that there's no Loctite in there, or hard Loctite, Goes on fairly easy. Now the little oil ring. You just have to be careful getting this on. <coughs> if you, I find if you do that, it'll go in. We just need to put this circlip in. Just make sure it's seated. So I've just picked up the frame and the, all this other stuff from the powder coaters. Two days it took them. Unbelievable. Big shout out to Southside Powder Coaters in O'Connor. So I'll just get started removing all this blanking that I put in. So we, this grit gets in everywhere. Despite all that, still got in there. But hopefully, at least no powder coating should have got in there.
So this is what your frame wants to look like when you get it back from the powder coaters. This is the swing arm pivots, they're totally clean and free of any powder coating in there. No scraping, no retapping threads, no putting on paint stripper. It's all good to go. The shock mounts, the head end where the bearings go, it's all clear. All the screw threads are, f are free of any powder coating as well. And I've just put that label back on, riveted on with some stainless steel rivets. Here's the sandblasting. Fresh sandblasting looks extremely weird. It takes a few weeks for that to corrode to a more normal patina like on the engine cases. And the top case seems to come out pretty good as well. I've just got myself a new tool for the workshop and it's the best kind of new tool. It's an old tool. Thanks to my brother, he's given me this uh, awesome 10 inch grinder. It's all solid cast iron. It says it's uh, Atkins in Perth and it's got a Sydney New South Wales address. It's only one horsepower but it's belt drive and it's got so much mass and momentum in it it really got some grunt. And my brother's fitted it out with a uh, VFD so it's a three phase machine but it runs on single phase with this VFD so it's freaking awesome Let me just fire this up it takes a little while to come on oh, it looks like we've got it set to it slows down quite quickly as well you can see the uh, RPM there. That's actually motor RPM. Um, so it'll go right up to 32 or 3400 because it does overspeed. The motor's rated at 2850 RPM. It's, um, I've got the covers off, so... It's actually two speed, which is great, because uh, this 10 inch wheel, tool um, grinding wheel, is only rated to 2500 RPM, which works out pretty much on the lower speed at um, 3450 on the motor speed so that's safe in fact it says on here only change belts to high speed when wheels wear to 8 inch so that's that's the thinking behind it so in here you can see the VFD and the motor down there. It's an absolute beast of a thing. Now I'm not sure what I'm going to put on it. I really would like two, two buffing wheels on a big machine. So that's, that may be what I end up doing with it. Stoked to have that in the workshop. 